Hey Ambitious Professionals, it's Linda Rayner of lindarayner.com, career strategist and intuitive purpose coach. I help driven professionals like you to enhance your personal brand so that you can pursue a career you'll truly enjoy. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about a topic that I've been asked about constantly, and that topic is all about phone interviews. So here are four key items that hiring managers, recruiters, and HR professionals are looking for in that initial phone screen interview that you need to keep in mind and that you can work on. The first item that interviewers are looking for in a phone screen is your energy and confidence. The thing about phone interviews is that they can't see your face. They can't read your facial expressions. They don't really have an in-person connection with you. And so what you have to understand is that the way that you come across over the phone is really important. And it comes down to the tone of your voice, the energy in that voice, and really how you're answering your questions. So when I say energy and confidence, I don't mean try to sound overly happy or excited. What I actually mean is that you should try to come across as pleasant, calm, and not overly pushy. So confidence actually comes from your ability to listen. Listen to the question that's being asked and allow for a short, awkward pause between the question and your answer. You don't have to rush into giving your full response uh, right, right after the question is asked. And on top of that, you don't want to take too long to give your answer as well. The last thing that somebody wants to do is talk to a robot when they're doing a phone interview because that's the fastest way for the interviewers to lose interest. And so you really have to keep it as though it's a conversation. So for the most part, the initial phone screen is to assess your energy and your confidence. And of course, a few other things that we're gonna talk about, but that's gonna play a really key role. Essentially, you want the interviewer to walk away feeling, wow, I really liked her or him. I think I want to bring them in and I want to meet with them. That is your intention. Your intention is that you want to engage them so much so over the phone that they want to meet with you in person. Now, the second thing that you need to pay attention to is that you have clear, concise, and articulate answers. Because interviewers can't see your face, it is actually super easy for anyone to zone out when somebody's talking to them on the phone. It's easy as just going on their laptop, going through Facebook, Instagram, and that is the last thing that you want these recruiters, these hiring managers, these HR professionals to be doing if they're interviewing you over the phone. So make sure you do not ramble. Just because you're nervous doesn't give you the right to start rambling and then shooting yourself in the foot and losing that opportunity to meet them in person. I've had so many phone interviews with candidates where I would find that they just did not know how to sell themselves in an effective way, in a really clear and concise way over the phone. Because a lot of the times, either they were nervous and they were just telling me all different things and rhyming through their whole resume to me, which is not what you should be doing. Or the, actually the opposite occurred, where they were just giving me one word responses. That also shows lack of interest on your end and therefore lack of interest from the recruiter's end. They're not gonna be interested in wanting to bring you forward. So make sure that ahead of time you're preparing your answers. I know this sounds like something that is a given, but you really wanna make sure that if you're doing a phone interview that you need to get your point across really quickly. So ask yourself in the first 10 seconds when you're starting to give an answer if they can already feel that there's a point that's gonna be made. If you don't think that a point is being made in that first 10 seconds, then that's a red flag for you to fix your answer, reorganize it, rewrite it, and practice it in a way that you can get your point across really quickly. So a very specific but helpful suggestion I have for this is when you're preparing for your phone interviews and you're practicing your answers ahead of time, you really want to also record your voice. Record your voice and play it back, listen to it, and ask yourself, if I was in the hiring manager's shoes and I was listening to myself answer, would I be engaged? Would I be willing to listen to the end of this recording? Or if you are yourself are finding that you're getting bored from your own answers, then you know that it's time to shed some fat from that answer and really make it clear, concise, and articulate. The third thing that phone interviewers are looking for is your technical fit for the job. 
So besides getting a gauge of your energy and confidence levels and seeing how articulate and clear your responses are, another key factor that hiring managers really want to know is whether you're a right technical fit for the job. They want to know that you have the right knowledge, qualifications, and experience to be able to do this position. So you want to make sure that the way that you answer your responses lines up to that and matches to the position as much as possible. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to identify the keywords from the job description that line up to your experience and being able to incorporate those keywords into your responses. So if over the phone you don't sound very technically aligned with the position, that is the fastest and easiest way for them to cut the interview short and say, you know what, um, we can't take you in. So you really have to be sure that this is a role that is appropriate for you, but even if it's a slight shift from something that you've been doing, but you have the transferable skills and knowledge and experience to be able to do the job, then that's how you have to sell yourself when you're giving them a rundown of what you're capable of and how you're able to do the job. And finally, one of the most important aspects that phone interviewers are looking for that a lot of people don't realize is actually to assess whether you have a top-notch resume. So I know what you're thinking. How does that make sense that they're looking at my resume in detail when they would have already looked at my resume and called me in for this phone interview? Well, I can tell you that the likelihood is this. When hiring managers call candidates in for phone interviews, they're batching resumes. They're taking a group of people out of a bigger group of people and saying, let's phone screen these individuals. But they're not necessarily going through a super in-depth analysis of the resumes. They actually tend to do that more so in the initial phone screen. Think about it this way. I'm a recruiter. I'm staring at nothing but your resume when I'm talking to you on the phone. During the 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes that I'm on the phone with you, I have nothing else to stare at but generally your resume. So that's an opportunity for me to really read your resume in depth. And if I want to, I'm going to pick out some questions that I may want to ask you during that time in the interview. So that's actually the time as a recruiter that I get to really assess your resume. And this is not just me as a recruiter, a former recruiter and now career coach, but I can tell you that this happens across the board in the industry where you know, you get that initial six second scan of the resume and you say, yes, I want to interview or no, I don't want to interview. But then in the, in the phone interview is actually when you're truly being assessed. And at that point, if the recruiter or the hiring manager has been looking at your resume plus five other resumes that day, and they were able to really decipher the differences between yours and the others, and they notice that yours really isn't up to par as much as they thought in that first sec six second screen or scan, then you're out of luck. So you want to make sure that your resume is top notch because it's not only going to take you to that first round interview, just because it got you the first round interview doesn't mean that it's good enough to get you into the second, third round interviews. And this is something that is so key. So you need to make sure that it is good enough to not only pass the HR's checklist, but also the manager that you're going to be working for in that next round. And then perhaps even the, the director and VP that you're going to be working for um, as well. They all have their own standards for how they want the resume to look and they're going to be assessing you in the interview and comparing you against the resume. So there you have it, my four key areas that you need to focus on when you're preparing for your next phone interview. So I know this video is all great for those people who are getting phone interviews, but if you're not even getting a phone interview, then definitely you need to be working on your resume as the number one priority. So feel free to download my 10 ultimate resume hacks cheat sheet located in the description box below, where you'll get my tips and tricks on exactly how to improve your resume so that you can land that next phone interview. And on top of that, you definitely want to join the Ambitious Professionals Mastermind Facebook group where over a thousand ambitious professionals from all over the world have joined together to support, help, teach, and assist one another when it comes to pursuing careers that they truly love. So you definitely want to be part of our community. So head on over to Facebook, click to join, and I will see you there. The link is in the description box below as well. If you liked this video, then please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share this video with your friends, 
And remember, this channel is all about helping driven professionals like you to enhance your personal brand so that you can pursue careers you'll truly enjoy. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video or over in the Facebook group.